WLFE DB Radio. Talk with Teddy starts now. You picked a topic, I picked a guest. Remember, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube page, Facebook, and more. You're listening to Talk with Teddy on WLFE DB Radio Network. Please check out our website at WLFE-DB.com. All right, everybody, welcome aboard. It's another episode of Talk with Teddy, and I have the beautiful May Hernan here with me this evening. And uh, we are going to be talking about Ireland. We're going to be, she's going to sing for us, too. I know she is. She's going to sing for us. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and uh, we're just going to talk about a lot of stuff. There's, there's so much uh, uh, stuff going on out there that I wanted to bring some joy to the world and distract everybody and... Um, Plus, go back to my roots. Now, did you notice? May I have my hat on? You know something, Ted? I was just looking at the cap. We call that a cap or a cap with coffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and it's it's called a flat cap here. Yeah. It's a flat, flat cap. cap. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, and it's like so. I have another friend up the road, uh, Ted, who, <laughs> you know, he's, he's Irish uh, heritage, and he had bought this beautiful cap. And he was very proud of it. And he comes in. Now, we have a superstition at home. You can't put a cap on a table. It's very bad luck. Just My never father. Oh, my father is that way. Yeah, okay. And um, he put the cap on the table. I said, Jesus, Jack, will you please take the cap off the table? <laughs> it's just ingrained into me, you know. Just take the cap off the table. So he put it on his knee. The dog took it. And five minutes later, I'm noticing the dog eating the bloody cap. Oh, the dog that he loved so much wasn't in his good books that day. <laughs> oh, I get it. My dad, he's, and we didn't understand for the longest time why my father always said, uh, no hats on the table, you know, uh, it's bad luck, you know, it's all that, don't ever put, don't ever put your hat on the table. Yeah. And even if he forgets some days because he's older and he's got dementia settling in, he'll sit down and he'll go to eat and he's like, he'll, nope, hat's got to come off. And he yeah, throws yeah. it on the back of the chair or on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. I get it. So, <laughs> um, so folks, we're here early tonight. We're an hour early. Um, so hello, Chanel. Hello, Ernie. Hello, Tyler. Um, hello, Jim. Uh, we are here early tonight because um, we needed to start a little bit earlier and uh, what's going to happen is there's a big change coming for Talk with Teddy again uh, come the 23rd of June. I'm going back to work, finally. And um, so I had to change the scheduling around, and, um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Hello, Elaine, my sister-in-law. Um, so that's going to Talk with Teddy, unfortunately, is going later. Um, come the middle of the month, it's going from midnight till 1.30 in the morning. So that is the big change, but that's because I work till 11.15 every night. So uh, that's going to happen, folks. It's going to happen. I'm warning you right now. <laughs> so don't forget, as always, folks, when you're joining us here, please like, share, and subscribe to Talk With Teddy on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And um, what's this one? Uh, Check out my YouTube page, Talk With Teddy, please, and subscribe because we're trying to get to 100 um, so that I can actually uh, have a uh, a custom uh, name on it. So that's why I need you to do that. Um, As always, Talk With Teddy is sponsored by, and they don't even know it, but it's always sponsored by MysteriousAdventuresTours.com at at Gmail. They they have no clue I've been doing that because they don't watch my feeds, but, you know, that's what I've been doing. Yes, I do. Uh, you do? It's very late. Ted, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm scrolling and I come across you and I'm listening and then I, I'm kind of nodding off. Yeah. And then, then I think, okay, this is it. I have to go to bed. I can't. <laughs> I'm getting old, you see. Ah, that's all right. So uh, this is who we have on the show, Miss May Hernan. She's a traditional singer, performer, and teacher, owner of Secret Ireland Tours, LLC, and co-owner of MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. And um, she's also my friend. Yes. (laughs) Yes. We are going to hang out, Ted. That's right. So we are (laughs) hanging out tonight, 
and yeah. we're gonna hang out in Ireland together. We're yeah. gonna go to we Scotland together. We think we're friends now, Ted. Uh, mm. You know nothing about friendship when you come home tired and late. You know, I, I gotta. Are you familiar with Mrs. Brown's boys? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I just started. Um, I just started watching some of it and getting some of the history behind it. And first of all, I had no idea it was an Irish uh, show, and, and it actually started out in the theater. Had no clue. Had no idea. Uh, but I knew. I knew her accent. I, knew, I was like, man, th I know that. Why don't I know that? You know, I couldn't place my finger on it. Um, but. You learn so much by just that show, and then when they were doing interviewing and stuff, you, they use the word "fuck" like there's no tomorrow. It's yeah. just a normal. It's just a normal word to them. Well, you know, when I have, <laughs> when I bring tours over to Ireland and we're on the bus, I pick them up from the airport. Just think of it now, Ted. You're walking in through Terminal Two, and I'm there to meet you. And everybody is lovely, and everybody is nice, and you know, very, very polite, and everybody right. is fantastic. And then we bring them out to the bus and we settle them into the bus. And I speak to them in Irish so that they know that there's another language in the country. And then I introduce myself and um, then I, I kind of tell them the do's and the don'ts. And one of the do's is, please, please don't get into a panic when you hear, when you go into a local pub and you hear every second word is. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> And, we can and, say it. We can say it here. It's it's a rated okay. R show. We can okay. say it. All right. So so um, I have I have to warn people. You know, don't be offended. It's a, just a word. We. It's just a word. It's. In it's, Ireland, it's just a word. It doesn't it's have. Just a word. I mean, we're not into this political correctness as much as the air over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, but we we regard it as a district. I mean, if if I'm in, if something is happening to me and I I'm working and it doesn't work out, and I'd say, oh, for fuck sick. Yep. I feel totally relaxed after that. <laughs> <laughs> and and but I have to warn people that's not yeah. used to that because you'll hear kids over there cursing like that. It's right. just, it's not a big deal over at home. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know the funny thing was, can I tell you a story? Sure. Your, your listeners' a story. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, let's see now. We'd be a little bit more modest at home, like um. For instance, I knew somebody that was in an Irish play. It was written by somebody who was not Irish. And um, at the very end of it, the girl pulls off her top and she is very well endowed with a very skimpy bra on the stage. Now, it was an Irish play, so there was a lot of bad language in it. And I'm outside the front of, the, and I'm shocked. Like I'm in, I'm in shock. I'm thinking, for crying out loud, can they not do anything here without having to expose themselves? Can right. they not act it out without actually having to to be that visual? So I was kind of annoyed, and I go out the front of the theatre, and I'm listening to two old women, and these <laughs> two women, <laughs> these two women were absolutely disgusting disgusted about the foul language nothing whatsoever about the young girl that pulled off the top and left herself exposed to a full theater full of people and i thought well, something very wrong here now a few curse words upset them but somebody stripping on a stage didn't so mm. Big culture shock to me. I couldn't get my head around that one for a long time. Huh. Do you know? And, and for here, these guys in America, they they're waiting for that to happen. They want it to happen. You know, they're they're good with it. You oh, know. Yeah, and, good with it. yeah, I wasn't. You see, I wasn't. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm not good with it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was these two old women? I was surprised that it was old, You know, it happened to be old women, and you know, they were horrified at the bad language but they weren't at all and i actually said to them i says oh my god is that what you're upset about because you see the bad language to me wouldn't be a big thing right but, but somebody stripping off was right. to me it was to me it was shocking you know right. and the chanel here chanel has has no chanel yeah there's two chanels one from <laughs> one is watching us on youtube and the other one is watching us on facebook and then i have a watch party started 
with a whole bunch of people over here as well. Uh, so we'll say hi to them real quick. We have Scott Wells, Tina Vanson, my sister. Um, Hello, good sister. <laughs> Mike Clark, Samantha Wells, uh, Phil Simone, uh, Chris Yule. Um, it's nice to see a buddy all the way in Tennessee. Uh, Hello, James Tennessee. Milligan. Uh, Kenneth Ewing and Tim Cochran, who I went to school with. Hello, Mr. Cochran Tim. Cochran is a good Irish name. Oh, that's a good Irish name. Cochran. Cochran. Oh, Cochran. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. My first uh, was Cochran. Well, and I was going to say, you say that even different, like here in America, it's Cochran and you guys, it's Corcoran, right? Or it's Cochran, it's yeah. Cochran and, yeah. Yeah. When people, you know, there's people called, um, how do you pronounce it here? McGrath. Oh, it drives me crazy, Ted. McGrath. We say McGrath. 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 Yeah. And then um, you'd say Mahoney, we'd say Mahoney. And um, Horan, my mother's maiden name was Horan, you'd say Horan. Horan, and yeah. Horan, we'd say Moran. And, yeah. And of course, we're right because that's where the words come from. <laughs> 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 that's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going, that's to, I'm awesome. going to be a real devil tonight now. Uh, no, that's okay. I get it. <laughs> I got it. I, I'm going to, uh, my sister put in here, she be speaking my favorite language. <laughs> oh, who are you English or Irish? Or the curse words. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my sister. Yep, that's your sister. So. What's your sister's name, Ted? It's a Tina Louise and then Vance on, same as mine. Yeah. Tina Louise. Yep. Tina Louise. Yep. I have a sister called Tina. She's yeah? my sister, yeah. But she's actually yeah. Martina, but we call her Tina. Oh, cool. Like Martina McBride. Yes, exactly. Yeah. She's yeah. Martina Dodd. Oh, she was Martina Dodd. She's Martina Gannon now. Gannon? I like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, we didn't, we haven't had time. We, and both of us have been busy the past few weeks, and I figured, you know, with everything that's been going on, uh, I really, and you know how I feel about Ireland. You know how I feel yeah. about this whole thing. So yeah. it's like, you know, I need, I need, <laughs> my sister says, yes, both the Irish language and the swear word. She's good with both. Um, um, you know, I just, I needed a break from the norm. And, you know, it's like, uh, I, I really wanted to keep pushing all of this. Now, I want you to kind of explain to the people what's going on with the whole trips right now, because some of them you had to push back because of the COVID oh, thing. All of them. I've had to put, I'll tell you, well, at the very beginning, when this thing started in, when was it, March, the beginning of, like, the first week of March, second week of March, I really thought that by Easter it would all be over. I really had myself convinced that, we, you know, everything would be okay. And, you know, uh, my first trip was in May. It was, I'm supposed to be at home in Ireland, Ted. Yeah. Well, I want everybody to understand how homesick I am. I was supposed to be at home in Ireland now. Huh. I would be bringing my second tour around now, so I I had I decided okay, I can understand people being uncomfortable traveling, right. and, and everything was shut down anyhow, so you couldn't do it. So I had to reschedule, and as the weeks went by, I I had to reschedule more and more and more. Today I've had to reschedule in my last two. One of them was, was for September, and one of them is for the end of October. But the problem. You see, I've been waiting. I've been contacting the Department of Health in Ireland. I've been contacting the Department of Transport. I've been contacting the Department of the Foreign Affairs. And all of them, as of now, there is um, a self-quarantine uh, mandatory order put in that if I go home now, or if anyone comes into the country, they have to self-quarantine for 14 days. They have right. to their address by law they have to give their address and a phone number and they can be checked up on at any given stage and they have to be there or they're either fined two thousand euro or they're put into jail wow so that and then there was um the people at home were confined to their houses and they could only go a mile outside their house unless it was an emergency or unless they had to go shopping now mm. that has been extended to five miles and by the end of phase one i think phase two you'll be allowed to go 20 miles but there's no talk of when that 20 miles will be lifted so right. i have i have the double worry i have the worry of having to let's say if i brought you over in september you might have to self-quarantine for two weeks i don't know nobody is telling me 
And then right. we have the, the problem of social distancing on the bus. And we have the problem of maybe we can't go any further than 20 miles from where we are. And right. no, at the moment, nobody is telling me. And as long as it's shut down, I can reschedule tours and I can take deposits that were paid and put them to next year. But you're in the catch-22 situation. You want to wait to see if things are lifted. But if things are lifted, the hotels might not necessarily want to give you a reason right. So and 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 I don't want people to be uncomfortable when they go to Ireland because of course the Irish haven't done such a great job because they have they've only had I think the last three days they've had no no deaths and they've had no um new cases. That's good. So that's good and they're you know they're working they're really well of course, it's out the window now because there's protests all over Dublin, so I don't know how that's going to affect it. But um, they were really doing well. And I'm sure right. they don't want to see crowds coming in from other countries. Right. You right. know. Well, so, well, it, it, it sounds like, though, that mine is still on, though. Yours is at 2021. I know. And I'm like, yeah, when you said you had to cancel out, I'm like, oh, I was no, getting no. depressed. I'm like, no. When you want to say if everything is good for 20, <laughs> please God, if it is good for 21. Oh, my God. But, guys, you've got to sign up and you've got to come with us. Yeah. We're going to have a ball. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. That, oh, we are going to have such. This is going to be like the the cream of the crop tour because I'm going to make it so much fun for everybody. And yeah. I'm just going to be like a little kid. I mean, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to want to see everything. And, yeah, and, yeah. and I want to be bellied up to the bar at the pub. I want to drink. I want to go fishing. I want to do everything. I want to, yeah. I want to have a blast, you know, yeah. you want to see um, the man and you want to see all that area there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, you just touched on something, and I don't want to get into the political a aspect of all it, but you said there's riots going on in Dublin, too, right well, now? No, not riots as such, as far as I know. I think there's there are protests. There, oh, protests, there, okay. As far as I know, it's peaceful protests. There was one <laughs> I heard somebody posted, some idiot, some fool down in Galway decided that he was going to protest uh, Garda pr brutality. Really? <laughs> Jesus said. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. If he had been my son, and I'm telling your listeners and your audience now, if he had been my son, I know whose brutality he would be. Because <laughs> he wouldn't be able to sit for a bloody week if yeah. I put him out. That's the truth. I, I, you know, Irish mothers were tough, you know. We don't take any nonsense at all. You can ask yeah. him three sons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello, Aunt Phyllis. My Aunt Phyllis is on hey, here, Aunt Eric. Uh, and uh, Eric uh, Van Leer. I'm going to guess that's how you pronounce your last name. Uh, Jeannie Perry. Oh, my God. Jeannie Perry? Holy moly. I haven't heard that name in, like, decades. Hello, Jeannie uh, Perry. Yeah. She's, if this is the right Jeannie Perry, she's married to my buddy, Doug Perry. Thank I you. hope that's the right one. Um, and Adam Barnhart. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining us here. I'm um, not so we're. Those, Ted. I'm only seeing Chanel. Yeah, those are on my those are uh, on my watch party over here. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you can't see him. Hello, Ted, and hello, May. Says Sheila Oslander. Ah, hello, Sheila. How are you? <laughs> so, guys, if you're just joining us, I am speaking or talking with Miss May Hernan. She is a friend of mine. She's also the one that is directing this uh, Irish tour that we're going on. And I said we because I'm gonna I'm gonna bug you guys to go. Uh, we're going uh, on the summer solstice next year, 2021. You got plenty of time, so don't worry now. You know, just get signed and up. It's, and it's it's next year, next year at this year's prices, isn't it, Ted? I mean, they're saving. Yeah, yeah. It's next year at this year's prices, so. Yeah, it, it's time to get it. You know, time to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Get get your name signed up now because it will go fast. Yeah. yeah, and there you can find that stuff on my um, on my page. You can find it on uh, paratalkradio.com. You can find it on my personal page. Um, you can hit me up, email, email me, uh, instant message me, and I'll send you the information. Um, you can. Um, <laughs> Sheila says I am signed up. <laughs> <laughs> you can also, if you're looking for more information about my 
little tour or other tours that may may have you can just uh send an email to mysterious adventures tours at gmail.com i'll put that up for you right now mysterious adventures tours at gmail.com and they're all um, kind of, they're all all those tours with mysterious adventure tours they're all kind of paranormal or haunted places and things like that haunted places that's what i like yeah. about it yeah. haunted places yeah but we're also going to the pub we're also going to see where john wayne filmed the movie um a quiet man um with the beautiful maureen mm -hmm. o'hara um and it's just going to be a fun time it, it's 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 just gonna be a blast we're gonna now i'm hoping may there's a couple things that i would like to throw on that list for us to do when we're there somehow mm -hmm. one is here's some good old-fashioned traditional oh, geez, irish yeah. music well you see there's where you are absolutely in luck ted because <laughs> i am a traditional singer and yes. I came over here. I also played the baron, and I used to play with all my tradition. My son is one. Well, all of my sons actually, but I have one son who that's a baron for anyone. I know. I is. know. And I, you know who that is, don't you? <laughs> so, um, that that my son Seamus. Sometimes he helps me with tour guiding, but he I always employ him and his musical friends to. Uh, come and play some traditional music and I get people up dancing I teach them how to do a few steps and I get people singing Ted that's yes that's a reminder I I, I, I just need a song I just need a song anything, any song it doesn't it we are not fussy we're not particular you can sing whatever the hell you like okay all right um, just so you know my sister says if I go I'll never leave the pub that's okay <laughs> Or, or, I'll be going home with a hot, drunken Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you now, Tina, if you go and you go to, and I'll, I'll be warning Ted about this too, alcohol in Ireland is a stronger strength than alcohol here in America. And unless you're um, a very tough kind of a person, you won't believe in the pub, you'll probably be carried out of it. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that bothers me is that I'll be honest with you, I am spoiled with cold beer here. Cold well, ale. Yeah, the beers, yeah, the beers are cold. Now, I'll t that's one thing uh, that we don't do. Um, there's one of the women that comes with me and she can't understand when she asks for, let's say, a whiskey with ice, that the glass isn't full of ice. They might put two two um cubes in it two right cubes. but we don't we don't over we don't dilute our drink that much because it's a sin so, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to dilute <laughs> it's a sin we're all fucking sinners we're all fucking sinners in america because we put too much yes. ice yes. in our if drinks you want, <laughs> if you want to dilute your, if you want to commit that sin just ask them for a glass full of ice, but don't tell them what you're going to do with it because it's just sacrilege to do that to good alcohol. The, the problem with that is now my sister, every time we get together to party and have a drink, she's going to go, if you put more than two cubes in there, it's a sin. She's <laughs> well, going to do that to me all the time now, guaranteed. Well, uh, Susan, this girl, she, she, she just can't get over this. What, what is your problem against ice? What is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> How's it that your drink for God's sake? <laughs> how, how, how do you expect to get shit faced if you put too much ice in your drink? Exactly. I mean, who, who would even think of that? <laughs> uh, so I want to say hi to uh, River Berry and also to, I like this name, Daniel Dorsey. Oh, Dorsey, that's what I would like your name for. And actually, oh yeah. There's a bit of English in there as well, Dorsey. Dorsey, yeah. 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 Now River Berry is actually going to be on the show um here in a uh, is it uh Thursday? I think it's Thursday. He's a uh, a bubble magician. A bub a what? Magician? A bubble bubble magician. Here, let me show you. Hello, River Berry. Uh, yeah, so he's a bubble magician. I, I thought I switched the pictures, but apparently I didn't. But a bubble magician Ooh. and an alchemist and a shaman. And he's going to be joining us, uh, yes, on the 4th. Ah. Yep. So that'll be fun. 
that would be yeah. fun. So I wanted to put, I, 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 I love this picture. Yeah, that's up in um, Dublin, Ohio. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, and that's then, the, festival, the, uh, the Irish Festival in Dublin, Ohio. And the other one was at the Dayton Festival in Dayton, Ohio. My sister just put, fuck the ice, just give me the straight jack, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, I absolutely love. That is, that house, that's a cottage in a place called Connemara, in a place called uh, Russellville, Connemara. And it is actually a very famous cottage. It belonged to Porrick Pierce, who was one of our um, freedom fighters and one of our uh, independence proclamation signers, who was killed by the English in Kilmainham Jail. And that was wow. she used to go to every summer to write his writings and to, to write his poetry. Uh, oh, it's, that's just it's it's so Irish, gorgeous. Uh, it's in an Irish speaking part of the country. So, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask what what is the roof? That's thatch. Hatch? No, thatch. T H. Thatch. Yeah, thatch. thatch. It's it's um a type of straw or um. Yeah, it's a str it's not a straw. What did I say? What's the word for it? Um. Is oh, it like a hay, like a heavy hay, no, it's, or? No, it's 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 grows on the side of a lake. It, it, let's see, straw is not the word. What the hell is the word for it? <laughs> I'm thinking in Irish now. I have to try and think. Um, uh, um, <laughs> oh, it's gone. I can't. What is patch? It, it's a type of straw. It's. um. Okay. Oh, uh, this is driving me crazy now. Oh, <laughs> you better get a drink because that'll help you think. <laughs> and then said, my grandpa was a Moor. He came from Ireland in 1921, but was born in 1917 from Leash. In a little village, his father had three wives, all from Ireland. The last one died in 2001. Oh. Sheila says it's a type of moss. No, 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 it's not a moss, no. It is, um, it's, um, it grows on the side of a lake. It's... <laughs> Somebody look up thatch. Thatch, what's it made of? It's, um... I'm saying straw, but it's not straw. It, there's another word on it. I don't know. Chanel, look it up for me while you're there. Yeah. What? What? Please. What's made? What is thatch roofing made of in Ireland? Oh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's driving. It's driving her nuts now. It's, it's driving, driving her nuts. Um. Oh, it's gone. I can't think of it. I'm okay. Well. Well, maybe you'll think about it while we're talking about some other stuff, okay? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. now, this probably isn't going to hit well with some of the listeners, but I actually did some searching over in Ireland to find out if you had even had these in Ireland. And somehow, while we're there, I want to sneak out and go see one. A drag show. Well, actually... In I, Dublin, there's, in there's Dublin, five of them. In Dublin, you will, and I can put you in, in touch with my nephew, who's a drag artist. See, I just want to go and see what it's like over there versus America with, with the drag drag shows. Yeah. Well, in Dublin, we'll be going back to Dublin the last night before we leave Ireland. We're staying in that castle. Yeah. Oh, God, I know. So we'll have to... Actually, people out there, we are staying in a fantastic castle the night before we leave Ireland to come back. What's the name of that castle again? It's Fitzpatrick's Castle in a place called Kalini, which is straw. Well, it was straw. I'm right. It's straw. Rushes. No. <laughs> yeah, straw. Rushes. Straw. Rushes. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. It's not, it's, it's reed. Yes, that's it. That's the word. Reed. It's a reed. <laughs> they grow on the edge of lakes and they're long, very flexible. And um, it's amazing to watch hatchers put this stuff on the roof. And there's a, there's an art form to it. And yeah. uh, it lasts, it would last about 30 years. And the, the problem is now you don't see it on the roof so often now because the insurance companies will put a high uh, insurance price on your house if you have patch because of course they reckon that it is a liability you know uh, go up in flames 
But that's what uh, the the house that John Wayne stayed in was that way. Yeah, it was a house exactly like the one that um, you showed me that picture of. And right. when we're going to be going through Connemara. I think we might be able to see that that cottage. But we'll we'll see any amount of them anyhow on our way, Ted. There's a lot okay. that are like you know with the thatch. I have a friend who owns a beautiful. She owns two of them, one beside each other, and she uses them as B and Bs. And the patch is absolutely uh. gorgeous on them. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm got. I went and snatched a couple pictures of that castle, it's so we can show you. Top. Yeah. Oh my God! I'm like so. It I is can't important. wait. I just can't wait. Hello, yeah. Lisa. Lisa Hagedorn, hello. So here it is during the day. Fitzpatrick's. Now, it's not oh, that color now. It's it's a kind of a gray color, gray, blue color now. The paint yeah. is on the bottom, but that is a 70, that's an 18th century castle. It's a four-star castle, and it's only five minutes walk from the beach. Uh, from It's beautiful, and they're very nice. The staff are lovely, and it's haunted. Yeah. See? Why not, right? Yeah. Go to a haunted castle. Yeah, and you oh, get Oh, that's to just awesome. Nice. I can't wait. Yeah. Now, I got to ask, like I chew tobacco. Do they have chewing tobacco over there? Um, you wouldn't find it so much now. I don't know whether you can buy it or not. But years ago when I was a child, I remember the <laughs> there was a friend of my father's who used to come in and you see we have open fires at home. You know, you can sit we used to that was the centerpiece of the household. People sat around the fire and okay. you'd be telling stories or you'd be playing music or whatever. And there was this particular old fellow who used to come into the kitchen and he'd be chewing tobacco and then he'd spit. Oh, it was disgusting. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> well, I, I, I spit in a bottle, so I mean, I do it so, you know. <laughs> You'll have to, you have to get over it because I, I, that's my only vice, that and my Jack Daniels. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, that's the only other thing is like, I mean, there are certain um, Irish liquors or whiskeys or bourbons that you can get over here, but they're more expensive than Jack. And I like, I like my Jack, you know. Yeah, so. You get Jack Daniels at home too. I don't know how expensive it is though. And um, yeah. my son drinks, we get together, my son and his girlfriend, um, uh, we do a Zoom every Friday night. And that's the only night he'll drink. But the drink at home, and he drinks um, something uh, Morgan rum and spice. Does that make sense? Is that what is? Am I right? Yes, I'm laughing at Sheila because she says her and I drive to these events together, and she goes, "Yeah." And then he leaves that bottle in my car. Oh God, Sheila! Oh, the one that he spits into. Oh Jesus! No. Oh God! We're going to have to talk to him before we go to Ireland. <laughs> No, no, no. This is not going to happen. No, Ted. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not quitting. I will stuff it. In, I will I will buy a, 20 cans and I'll bring them with me. I, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Oh, God. I'll buy some Red Man or something that's in a little baggie. So yeah. I'll do that, you know. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, I... I uh, I, I am so excited about this trip. I can't tell you how excited I am. And um, I really... Now, I have a couple friends that have said to me that they they really want to go. I'm trying yeah. to convince them to get their um, information into you uh, yeah. really soon. Yeah. Kenny, yeah. Kenny Biddle and his and his uh, beautiful wife, wife uh, Deborah. I'm trying to get them to uh, get that information into you yeah, so that they, you, they're all I set up. Put names on the list straight away and, and oh, yeah. because, you know, once, once we start pushing this out, people will want to come and oh, yeah. it's on the list first. It'll be first come first serve. Yeah. And, and you know, what gets me is like, guys, I mean, we sit here, we just all got that. Well, not all, but there is a mass majority of the public that got the, the, uh, stimulus package, which was $1,200. If, if you think about this, the, the tour, uh, to Ireland next Ju June, June, July. Yeah. Yes, June. Yeah, uh, it, it's seven. It's seventeen hundred dollars, and you have from now until then to pay for it. I mean, you have. Uh, they have installment plans. They have all that stuff so that you can afford to go. Um, I, I, it, it's well worth it. And if you get your airplane ticket now, it's cheap. Yeah. I mean, it's much cheaper than what it would be. 
Um, I was talking to Sheila about it. We were actually talking on the phone, and she got a round ticket for like six hundred bucks. Yeah, you can easily, and if depending on where you fly from, let's say if you fly from Chicago or Newark or New York, you know, like um, Atlanta, you can get very good um, deals. Yeah. And if people are really, really, um, if they want to search Air Portugal, some of them do really good deals, like 226 good. one way. So you're talking about a you little know, over 500 for, about for 500, yeah, about five. Yes. So, yeah, so the total trip is probably going to cost you, you know, a couple grand, but you have plenty of time to put that money away. You um, have to pay for, you know, like as I said to you, Ted. Anyone who pays the deposit straight away, they can then take the balance that right. they go and multiply it or divide it by ten months, and have the thing paid off. Yeah, yeah. My sister's like, I'm still wondering how y'all are going to get his ass to fly. <laughs> We're going to get him Jack Daniels before we we meet him at the ground before before we take off, and I just slip in a few, um, you know. PM, Mickey's. Apple PMs or something. A few Mickey's. <laughs> uh, hello, Lisa Ann. Um, so, yeah, you know, and Diane Carter. I may as well run through these quick. Yeah. Uh, Ruth Ann Hilliard. Uh, Linnell. Hello, Linnell. Ronald Bobcak. Uh, and I think I got Lisa already. Um, but, hey, guys, thank you for, for joining us um, here. We're, uh, we're doing the Irish tonight. That's what we're doing. So... Yeah. I, I've been. Irish, come into the that, <laughs> I uh, I I started this morning. Um, I was watching different videos and trying to pick up on the accent and how they talk so that I can get ready for next year. I got a whole year to plan this, so you know I'm trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. So I'd like run through a line and you know try to make sure that I said it the way they did. And it's not very good yet, but give me a couple weeks and and we'll have something pretty good. Okay. But um. You know, I was, I even started writing that way. Uh, I wrote something, that's, um, almost like if you think about like the Lucky Charms, you know, that we eat over here in America, the, the, this breakfast cereal, it's like, oh, oh me yeah, Lucky yeah. Charms, oh, me Lucky Charms. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> throw a little me, throw a little me in there and it sounds yeah, good. Me, Just yeah, a, exactly, that's it. You a little me. Yeah, you don't have to do an awful lot with it, you know, just me and ye and um, Tuesday as opposed to Tuesday and yeah. you instead of do and, you know, a few little things like that and you have it. And you got to do that whole, like, it's kind of with singing the way your 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 notes go up and down the way, like, if you just heard the, sec the, the, the sentence she just said, the, the way it. little, the way little, you know, you got to get that little, yeah. you know. We kind of little when we're talking. <laughs> See, <laughs> Tina says you're gonna have to knock his ass out and drag him on the plane and triple strap his ass in. <laughs> it's all right, we managed. Look, I've had to deal with tougher than that. Believe me, I be, I'll be well able for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll have a. I, you know, it's. I, I'm hoping that Sheila mm. and I can get the same plane together yeah. to go, so we're riding together. Yeah. You know, instead of me going by myself. So, well, I come well, up to New York and I go up from there. Or I might be just the problem is I might be. I have so Ted, I have so many tours that I've rescheduled now, and so many tours that we're hoping to take in 2000. My husband is going to divorce me. It's a <laughs> because I won't be here. I'd be at home. <laughs> and I'm wondering how the hell I'm going to deal with the whole thing. Uh, my sister says, ask her if she knows the movie, P.S. I Love. Oh, brilliant you know, with... Brilliant Okay. Movie. Well, there Tina, you go. talking about that movie, the first time I saw that movie, I remember um, I walked in kind of in the middle of it, and you know where she's walking in the National Park, or the reckon it's not really the National Park, but she's walking up the road, and she stands there, and she sees the valley full of, of heather, and he walks up, and he says, are you lost, love? Well, I remember looking at that and I'm thinking, geez, that's in Ireland, but where is it in Ireland? I've never been there, you know, and I, w I was just totally blown away by the beauty of it. But anyhow, I ended up <clears throat> meeting this this person 
and he brought me up to the Sally Gap. That's the name of the place where she was. And I remember getting out of the car and I walked across the road and I looked down the valley and I actually cried because it's so beautiful. Oh, and I no so thought because it happened to be raining slightly that day and I realized Please, God, he won't notice that I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and I come, I come from a very beautiful part of the country, but this was breathtakingly beautiful. And, wow. and it was, even when I was looking at it, the heather wasn't blooming. But I mean, even without the heather, oh my God, it was gorgeous. So, uh, yeah, yeah, P.S. I Love You was a great movie. Oh, well, she said, absolutely my favorite movie in the world, she says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Sh Sheila says, I can't wait to be next to Ted on the plane. I'm going to record him all the way to Ireland <laughs> and back home. <laughs> and hold it over your head. Uh, that's it, Sheila. You said. Hello, <laughs> Hello, Tom McBride. Hello, Mr. Tom. Tom um, McBride, that's a good Irish name. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, a, lot of the, um, a lot of people that I know in the music industry actually have Irish names. Irish it's, names yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it's well, amazing. You know, like, like said, we're a very musical country. The best yeah, we. Hey, musicians came out of Ireland. I I got the Ireland over here, which music and, and drink, and I got Native American over here, drums and drink. <laughs> <laughs> What's the common denominator? <laughs> drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so I'm going to be able to drink and play a drum at the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we can play drums together. I play the bar on. There you go. So there you, you go. Play the drums and I play the bar on. I don't know where you're going to get a kit of drums now, but <laughs> <laughs> I got a drum that I made. I'll bring it with me. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> 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 I love it. You know, I want to bring it back to, to Mrs. Brown's voice because I am learning so much, believe it or not, from that show yeah. about how the Irish speak and how they act with each other and, yeah. you know, all of that. That I, I learned from that show. It, it, may, it may sound weird, but I do. I, yeah. I You know, it, it's it's just amazing to me. Well, it, it's uh, the man that, that plays her, Mrs. Brown. He's a, a comedian from Dublin. Oh, he Brendan is amazing. He is, yeah. Brendan O'Carroll is his name, and he really is very, very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that, that's based up in Dublin, you know? So it's it's actually, I haven't seen it now in a long time, but it was very good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I think it's funny. He plays a woman really well. <laughs> he does, yeah. He does. And he plays an Irish mammy very well, actually. Yeah. Oh, and I had no idea that the woman that plays his daughter was actually his wife. Wife, yes, that's his wife, yeah, his real wife. I'm like, oi. Yeah. It's like, okay. So, yeah, Tina, um, sis, if I don't come back, that's where my new home is going to be, just so you know. So keep up your smart mouth there. <laughs> She's like, just give him a lot of Dramamine. He'll be fine. And keep the puke bucket handy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but you you know we were talking about things to make you feel or look like you're Irish. I, well, you know, learning the language a little bit. But all you gotta do is buy one of these caps because yeah. I look Irish. I yeah. look Irish. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. But you can't have me pot of gold. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about your music career a little bit. Now, you started. How how young were you when you started singing? Well, it's a long story. What I say now? How will I? How will I diplomatically <laughs> talk about this? Okay, my mother, God rest her soul. She actually she she was her her anniversary of her fifty second year of passing was thirty first of May, which is only the other day. Yeah. But she was a beautiful singer. And I grew up, well, she died when I was going on nine. And um, I'm telling everybody my age now, I shouldn't have done that, should I? <laughs> 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 I mean, that's only what seems with numbers knows what age I'm about to become. <laughs> oh, sugar. Nobody break out the, nobody break out the calculators. You don't need to know how old she is. Just ignore anyway, that part. 
<laughs> she used to she used to pull us around at night time and she would sing before we go to bed at night she'd sing over oh, many years ago my mother sang this song to me a song so soft and low just a simple little melody in her good old Irish way. And I give the world if I could hear her sing the song today. To the world, to the to the Hush now, don't you cry. That's an Irish lullaby. So she used, awesome. yeah, she used to sing that for us, and um, she she used to sing Ave Maria. And a few more songs that I remember. And then, you know, after she died, there wasn't music, didn't happen in the house for a long time. Right. Um, I think it was just too sad for my father, you know? Yeah. So um, then, of course, I, getting into my teenage years, I would uh, we'd have sessions in the house, or I'd go out to the pub with my father, and there'd always be traditional music. Like I come from a village that is... It's a very small village, but it's unbelievably cultural and unbelievably rich with great musicians. And that's why my, my sons all play music. And um, I grew up listening to the best musicians and the best singers. And I, I, you know, listening, sitting there listening to them, I soaked in all of this stuff, but I never, I didn't sing. I wouldn't sing. I wouldn't sing in public. And then i used to dance do a thing called set dancing <clears throat> and it's it's i get to doing it when you go over to ireland it's it's kind of like barn dancing or like contra dancing over here okay great fun so every year even when i was married every year um down the road from us in tubacore where we're going to be staying actually um there's a summer school every july and people come from all over the world to learn how to, uh, they get intensive classes in all the different instruments. And I used to teach there actually, eventually when I started singing um, and dancing. So I used to set the kids into their own music classes and I'd go up and I'd do my dancing class. Uh, and it used to be just great fun. And I ended up rupturing a disc in my back mm. one time. Now, one of the musicians that used to play with my ex-husband who was a world renowned musician uh, my hus my ex-husband was so he had this musician who was a great singer who used to play with him he heard me one night singing a lullaby to one of my children and he said to me i never knew you could sing and my reaction was i can't sing i got very defensive about it and i don't know why i did to this day i'm trying to find out why i was very defensive about that and he says you should come to some of my workshops because he was teaching at the trouble quarry summer school at that stage so anyway i didn't think about it <clears throat> i ended up having a ruptured disc i had an operation a couple of weeks before that year's summer school and when i left the kids in to do their classes i knew i couldn't go into the dancing class because it would kill me if i had to sit there and i couldn't take the chance of dancing with my back the way it was right so i remembered column talking to me about the singing workshop now ted when i tell you it took me 20 minutes to convince myself to go up to that class it took me 20 minutes and then when i got there it took me about another 10 minutes before i had got enough courage and guts to knock on the door mm. and eventually i knocked on the door and i walked in and of course i was late <clears throat> and column says to me well it's about time you turned up 
that was the first thing he said to me in front of everyone. And I, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen who are listening to this, I was horrendously shy. I was very bad. And I knew guess it today. Then, <laughs> I, 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 I sat down and I'm, I'm now I'm dying with nerves. And he says, okay, everybody has sang me a song. Now it's your turn. And I looked at him and I says, Colm, don't, please don't do this to me. And he says, May, I know you can sing. He says, you have to, everybody else did it. I want to hear you sing. So I said, okay. I said, I don't, I'm only going to sing you one verse of a song. So he says, okay, one verse of a song. And I did. And now when I tell you the sweat literally pumped out of me with nerves. I know what that's like. And I stopped. I stopped um, at the first verse. And there was silence and nobody said anything. And I'm thinking, oh my God. Oh my God. I nearly died. And then they all applauded. And I'm still thinking, ah, yeah, you know, you didn't really like that at all. But anyhow, <laughs> That first class, I made, I made three or four very good friends, and this is over twenty-four years ago. Wow! And it was them that encouraged me to sing, and two years later, I was teaching that class, and I, I had made my first CD, and it was like a bird being let out of a cage, like that. I was singing, and I was just hungry, and all I wanted to do was get traditional songs. I didn't want to any, I wasn't interested in any other sort of music. I just needed traditional songs. Traditional songs and a traditional singer is somebody who does not sing to music. And we do right. a lot of ornamentation and we do a lot of different phrases. And it's very free flow. There's not necessarily a beat to it, mm. and, which means that it's very hard for a musician to back a traditional singer unless the traditional singer sticks with the music, mm. opposed to the other way around because you wouldn't know where, like I could sing a song tonight one way, I might do it totally different tomorrow morning, depending on how I feel. It's very, very personal. There's no, very little beat to most of these songs. Wow. And um, it just, it just, well, it was like a different world for me. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. And then. Well, I, I love it. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So I ended up um, doing a CD and. Then I ended up doing another CD and people were asking me to, to perform in different places. And I ended up going over to England and I ended up doing gigs all over the place. And then I came over here and I started doing festivals over here. I ended up with four CDs and as soon as I get enough money, I'm going to go into the studio again and do my fifth one. It's about time I did something again now because I haven't done anything in a while, you know. And well, I don't. I would love. I would love to get my hands on a couple of yours now, just to have I here. Send, I think it would be great. Yeah, I said. Did I not send one to you? No. Mm -mm. Oh, oh, I better. I have. I have my four. My fourth CD. The rest of them are sold out, but I can. I can. I have my fourth CD still, and I can um, download stuff from the computer for you. Oh, it won't cool. be in a package or anything, but I, I you know, I'd send right. it. My my sister first, uh, you know, while you, when we were talking about your age earlier, she says she in a day over forty. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then now, because you sang that song, your mother sang for you. She says the hairs on uh, are standing up on my arms. She says. Ah, that's nice. Well, I'll tell you something, Tina. I have a son who's thirty nine. I have a son who's thirty five, and I have a son who's thirty four. <laughs> mm. So I am a day over 40 and a couple of them, believe you me. <laughs> uh, Chanel here, she says, uh, she says, uh, to Ralu, Ralu, yeah, that, that's an Irish lullaby over in Killarney. Many years ago, my mother sang a song to me in tones that's so sad. soft and low, just a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way. And I'll give, give the words. The, I could hear some of that sound. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. Bing Crosby used to sing that, Ted. Yeah. 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 But my mother used to gather us around every night before she put us to bed and sing that song. So I put it on my first CD and I, I dedicated it to my sisters. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So if you guys are just joining us, we are speaking 
Um, we're having a nice conversation here. Uh, this is May Hernan, uh, traditional singer and performer and teacher, owner of Secret Ireland Tours LLC and co-owner of MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. Um, they're the ones that I have been talking about um, when I say that the that Talk with Teddy is sponsored. Um, that's what I do. I put it up here. It's a sponsored by MysteriousAdventuresTours.com because we are going to Ireland in 2021, and I'm inviting you all to come with me. And um, we're going to have some, uh, we have a package and all that stuff, a way for you to get a hold of us to sign up to go. Uh, and my sister says, uh, Galloway Girl is my fave. Oh, Galloway Girl, what, yeah. Galloway Girl. Yeah, so. <laughs> so there's, we really want to invite you to join us next year. Um, that's one of the little things that we're talking about tonight, but also because I, I love traditional Irish music. My background is, is Irish. And uh, May surprised me. One, one of the first times I interviewed her, she sang. And I just, I guess I, I, guess I needed my fill of May today. I needed to, <laughs> I need to, you know, I needed that. But, you know, so um, now what, uh, <laughs> this is probably a weird question because I'm not, I'm not sure what they are. But, like, the Scottish have the bagpipes. What do... The Irish, Irish have the, it. the Irish have the Illin pipes. Illin pipes. Illin pipes. They are um, they're actually the most difficult instrument to play. They're on the knee. They have a chanter. They have a drone, and they have a bag. You play with your fingers. You don't blow into them. That's the difference. You don't blow into them. You use one elbow to pump the bag. Uh. You use the other wrist. You use your wrist to hit the, the chanters and you use your fingers. So you're playing with the wrist, the elbow, and the fingers. Wow. Sinead, wow, that's thank kind of... you so much for saying that. She said, yeah, that's a nice compliment. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love Bing Crosby as well, actually. I thought he was a great singer. That's better than like when you have to tap your head and rub your belly yeah, yeah, at the same yeah, time, yeah, you know? So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm talented. I'm talented. It is a hard <laughs> instrument to play. It's, they reckon you're learning for seven years, you're practicing for seven years, and you're perfecting for seven years before you become any sort of a piper. I have, I was going to ask you, and I forgot to dig it out. I have um, an Irish c CD, and I, I'll have to find a copy of it and send it to you so that you can kind of translate it for me. Okay, is it in the language? Yeah, yeah, I love... Uh, um, It's the, one of the words is like habanica cula, habanica cula. Gosh, shit, I can't think of what the rest of us. Shit, I don't know, I don't know, but I, I love. I thought it was it from the horse lips. Are you thinking about that one from the horse lips? So that's actually, Something like that. yeah, yeah. That's the that's the horse lips, I think. Um, yeah, that's it's that's pretty a, close. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's actually a Scottish song. Really? That's, that's Scottish Gaelic. Oh no, kidding! Because it's on it's on the Irish CD. Yeah, they're an Irish band, but they 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 did very well with that particular their arrangement of that particular song. I think it's the same one. That's it. That's Something like that. Yeah, that is the same one. That's um, that would be a Gaelic song from Scotland. Oh, no kidding. But, but the Horse Lips are they were a very very famous Irish band, and they used to do Celtic music. You know, not just Irish but Celtic as well. Wow, <laughs> I just I really love it because it's just two girls singing different parts and different harmonies and it overlaps and it's just oh my god it's so beautiful yeah. you know so yeah i i have it blaring in my truck most of the time yeah. <laughs> that's the way to do it i uh, i love it though but you know the, yeah the cds that i have i i buy cds because like i write um i write uh, alternative music more than like, i say in country for 20 24 years mm -hmm. and so i've been to nashville i've recorded i've done all that stuff and 
I tried to make it big, you know, but apparently I was too big for country music. Um, and so, look at I'm already starting to talk like that. And yeah. so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I started writing, uh, I started listening to some other different musicians around the world. And some of them, um, wrong culture, but great music. Thanks, Chanel. <laughs> Tom Nally. Uh, Are you Tom? Yeah. yeah, hello. Your guest from a little Irish boy in Philly, he says. Uh, Tom, you're going to have to come over to Ireland with us in June as well next year. I would like him to go, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, uh, anyways, as I was saying, uh, Carol or Taylor. Hello, Carol. Um, anyways, I started listening to a lot more uh, Native American music, writing. And their mm -hmm. words... Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, transformed into American words or to English words. Yeah. And um, they're so beautiful yeah. with what they meant. And so I started writing the same way. And they had songs like um, it, it was called Reservation Road, and it was all about living on the reservation and and you know how far that road really was from America to the people you know to outside the reservation and yeah. the things that happened. Mm -hmm. And um, they had another one. It was called Raven in the Snow. And oh. it was all about being a big black bird in a big white field and not being afraid to stand out. Yeah. You know, not, don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah. And anyways, that's what I took from it. So, you know, I'm, I love music. It doesn't matter what it is. And, it, and if it has a great story, I love it even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the group of songs that, I mean, people say to me, God, do you sing those miserable old sad, sad sorry songs? <laughs> you know something I find, um, the songs that I sing usually have a very, very strong story. And a lot of them are pieces of history that has not, Irish history that hasn't been uh, captured in a history book, but they're a local history and they're, they're, it's about local places. And, you know, it's, yeah, they are very, a lot of them are very sad songs, but there's there's great stories behind them. And it's not really the singer, it's it's the song. It's more mm. so the, the, the song, you know? So and what happens... Singers are, country singers are loved over in America, in Ireland. So really? So you they kept, the, they won't want you to go back at all. Well, who says I'm going to leave? No, I don't think you will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you will. I'll have, to, I'll, I'll have my passport. I'll just like... Uh... Uh, where is Teddy? Where's Teddy? Yeah, yeah, Teddy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> America? What? America? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Where's that? <laughs> What's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no way. Uh, hello, Stephen Brandt. Um, lots of little people coming on my watch party here, um, which is great. Um, you know, I, I find it amazing. No matter where you come from and, and, and how you sing or what you sing, there's that kindred thing between musicians there is yeah and and it's amazing how like i've seen um like river dance okay yeah. like you watch how um they would show how um the spanish um yeah. i think it was a you know the, the girls flamingo. yeah the flamingo dancers the flamingo dancers you know with the transition and and what you know how how that music just mm. kind of yeah. mixed and mm. you know all of that stuff and then i i River dance is my probably the favorite of mine whatsoever. I mean, well, I love know, the Mike, dance. Michael and... Flatley's father went yeah. to school with my father. He came really? from miles from my village, and Michael okay. Flatley used to come to Gertrude every year um, to uh, this festival we had called the Coleman Memorial. And uh, Michael is a great flute player. I don't know whether a lot of people know him as a dancer, but he's a great flute player as well. And he used to learn his flute playing and tunes from my postman who was called Seamus Tansy, who was a great flute player as well. And mm. um, yeah, Michael, I, I remember seeing him when he was only about 12 or 13 coming to, to, wow. uh, to Gertrude. Wow. I remember thinking that he was an awful cocky little shit at that time, but <laughs> <laughs> he, seems to, he seems to have grown up and got to be a little bit nicer now. <laughs> I got to learn how to say that a cocky little shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, just... Hello, Mr. Robert White from Australia. Oh, it's Robert here. Hello, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love. I, I don't know what it is, me. I, I don't know if it's. 
It's in uh, your blood, Ted. You can't help us. Yeah, it, it's really strange. It is. You strange. know, it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's funny. My husband's ancestry is Irish as well, and you know, McEvoy, they they were from Mayo, and he never had that much of a. I was going to say grow. Grow means love. <laughs> a grow, you know, when we're talking, when I think about Ireland, I I kind of slip back into the way I think when I think in Ireland, you know, so he hadn't much of a grow for Ireland, meaning he didn't have that much of love for Ireland, but his older brother and his younger sister had that passion for Ireland and they never saw Ireland, but mm. he decided to come. The first time he came to Ireland was in 2000, and, 2000 actually. And he said that he was going over to Wales first and then he came over across the Irish Sea into Dunlera. And he said that as the boat was coming closer to the shore, he was shocked because he actually got very emotional. And when, yeah. he, when he got off the boat and he stepped on Irish ground, he was actually, he said he was, he was actually weeping. He, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't understand it. But it was like that I, we have an old saying at home, Ted, Irish blood will always come home. It might jump set generations, but Irish blood will always come home. Uh, and and I, that can be. I it. remember you telling me. I remember you telling me that I'll probably get emotional when I get over there. I remember you, you telling me will. that. You probably will. You know because you're, Mick is not the first one I've I've heard that happen to. I've heard it happen to a, a good few people, and it took them by surprise because they weren't even thinking like that. Yeah. Do you know? Well, I think about it. I've been thinking about it, and every time I think about it, I I get a little emotional already just yeah, because yeah. I. I want to get there. I want, you know, and Come I, on, I and I, bring Ted to Ireland. The only way you right. do it is by signing up for the tour. We're going to have that's such right. a fantastic time. Yeah, it so will you guys got to sign you up. Know, it will be a trip of a lifetime, and I know that people are finding it hard now, but something to look forward to. Instead of looking, thinking, you know, negatively, think, think positive. You can do this. This can be yeah. the the thing that you work towards for. The rest of the year and next year yeah yeah and we're still trying to get our robert to join us from australia yeah come yeah, on we are. you can do it you can do it <laughs> now the can i had a bunch of australian people coming with us um in october and they had to cancel because australia are not allowing any uh, international flights until 2021 really yeah so they couldn't come Tom, well, they were going. Irish bloodline hasn't gone home. And, uh, well, Tom, there is absolutely no excuse now for you. You have to come <laughs> in uh, yourself and uh, whoever else. Get a partner and just come on. And that boy can drink. That yeah. boy can well, drink. Um, Ted, on your website or on your social media, if you send people or if, if anyone wants to go to Haunted, haunted Journeys, Actually, oh, it's mysterious, or whatever it is, mysterious, mysterious. Let me let me write it here. Let me write it down because she sent it to me. Did she send it to you as well? Maria Schmidt yes. is my partner, and um, I own Secret Ireland Tours, and then I am a partner with Maria Schmidt. She is with Haunted Journeys, and she's an amazing person, and she knows so many people, and it's her actually that introduced me to Ted. Yes. And, um, yep. So um, that's, yes. that's amazing, um, uh, mysteriousadventurestours.com. Yep. And you'll see yep. the tour, Rob, um, Ted's tour there. And then once you click on it, you'll see a flip book or you'll see an ebook, and you'll see join tour and click there and it'll open up a big form for you. We call them job forms. And you can put your name down there to keep a space straight away. And I'll contact you then, and then we can talk about deposits and, and installments and all that. Straight away. Straight away. Straight away. <laughs> is, that, is that how I sound? Straight away. <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, so. going be, it's going to be a, a great time. We're going to go to, we're going to do the summer solstice. Yeah. Is, um, hopefully, if the weather is good, I'm going to bring you up this mountain well, it's not a massive mountain. Um, we, we can drive up so far and then we have to walk the rest of the way. And we will see 
um, an underground passage to him. And when the sun comes over the mountain behind us, it'll shine down and it'll go straight in, in between the two um, capstones and it'll shine into the chambers and it'll light the inner chambers. And yeah. we would celebrate summer solstice in Ireland in 2021. It will be amazing. And then we're going to go to where the quiet man was filmed. And I have a friend actually, she lived beside us, a neighbor of ours. Her name is Evelyn Sweeney. And she is uh, John Ford's first cousin who directed The Quiet Man. So I told Ted that if I can lay my hands on her at all, I'll introduce him to her because he's a big fan of The Quiet Man. And mm -hmm. um, we'll go to the cottage and we'll go to uh, Kong Village where it was filmed. And I think that um, everybody is going to enjoy it. There's so much more that we're doing as well, Ted, and I can't remember. I don't have the itinerary in front of me. That's okay. The, so the one that says HTTPS www.hauntedjourneys.com yeah. Mysterious Advent, Haunted Adventures, if you click that, it brings you right to the page where my, yes. my trip is posted. Yes. It's the fourth one there. And the itinerary is there. Um, in fact, I could probably tell you um, here. So we could go over that real quick. Yeah. And uh, the and I, I, you tell me where it is, and I'll talk about it then. I can do that. I can do yeah. that. Because we're going to work in tandem, and we're going to work. We're going to be a great team, Ted. Okay. <laughs> and it's eight days, or it's nine days and and eight nights. Yes, nine days, eight nights. Yes. So it is. Uh, uh, June fifteenth to the twenty third, twenty twenty one, and the first day it says, uh, uh, "Me, Ted Vanson Jr. and the guides of Mysterious Adventures Tours will greet and meet you at the Dublin Airport in the morning. From here, we will take a trip to Enchanted by the Powers Powers Court House and Gardens. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Powers Court House and Gardens is about an hour south of Dublin, and it's in County Wicklow." And this place is absolutely stunning. Now we're going to have two or three hours and it has absolutely amazing gardens and it has a Japanese garden and it has a fairy garden as well. And it's absolutely, it has ponds. I mean, the, it's absolutely stunning um, to go oh there. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely, I mean, you really, you really need to really get the best out of it, you'd nearly need the whole day. But I want to bring you up further then up to Glendalough as well, which is um, a seven, it's a, a mon it was a monastic settlement. Uh, it's dating back to about the fifth century. And um, like, if you want hauntings, you'll get, you, if you're anyway sensitive, you'll pick up a lot. We're, we're going to, uh, to uh, visit this it's a graveyard, but there's a round tower and there's a few uh, churches that are, that's Powers Court. It's yeah. absolutely stunning, but the gardens are absolutely stunning. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that and I'm like, oh my God, that is like yeah. gorgeous. But if you stand up there at those, at the, that, um, above those fountains, behind that, um, that um, fencing there and look, away from the house, look towards, you know, whoever's looking at us. The, the, there's a beautiful yeah, pond. The, the gardens are absolutely beautiful, unbelievable. And there's um, there's a Japanese garden there as well. Oh, it's gorgeous. So um, then we're going to bring you up to Glendala. Um, that's the monastic settlement. Um, there is so much there. Are you, have you frozen on me, Ted? I think you've frozen on me. I don't know what's happening. If you're still here, guys, uh, let me know if anyone can hear me. Robert or Chanel, can you let me know if you can hear me or are we both frozen? Because Ted is definitely frozen. Can anyone put up a sign? 
looks like he has frozen okay can you hear me robert can you hear me yeah oh it's only me maybe he'll come back i'd say he'll come back but anyhow i keep going and i talk to you about um if i can find the itinerary you can see and hear me ted uh, robert all right brilliant let me just get my computer and i'll get the itinerary and we'll wait until ted comes back oops sorry guys oh jesus come on now i just have a look at this itinerary so yeah but it's, it's going to be a great tour i hope you can come back on now um ooh. so if you go to If you go to Haunted Journeys and um, Mysterious Adventures Tours, you'll get the itinerary. Maria, Maria, unfortunately, my partner, was building the website and she got very sick. I thought she had COVID, but in actual fact, she did not have COVID, thank God. But she did have pneumonia. And um, uh, she was building this website before she got sick. So everything kind of was thrown back. Uh, a week or so in Ireland and I'm going to t talk to you about the itinerary does anyone want to hear about the itinerary I'm hoping that Ted will come back to me I'm sure he probably will it's talk with Ted with me show. it's the talk with me show it is <laughs> yeah anyway um, as I said the first day is Powers Court House and Gardens and he showed you the picture of Powers Court and then we're going up that eve that day to Glendala as well, and we're going to spend some time in Glendala. Absolutely gorgeous part of the country. Um, we'll have enough time to go around the the ancient site, and then we might be able to drive you up if if the bus can fit at all. We'll drive you up. There's two lakes, and there's a gorgeous walk around the lakes as well. It really is a beautiful part of the country. The the call Wicklow County Wicklow, the Garden County of Ireland, and it's because it's such a beautiful place. That's day one. Day two, we're going to go to Newgrange Meg Megalithic Underground Passage Tombs. And that's up in County Meath. It's north of Dublin. And on the way then when we visit those, and there are, that's an amazing place. And again, it's an underground passage tomb. And you walk, you go in through uh, an old, narrow um, tunnel. And um, it, you, you go into this chamber and you're in the middle of the chamber, a, a chamber in the middle, and then there's three chambers off it. And um, that's exactly like the tomb that I'm going to be bringing Ted and everybody into for the summer solstice. But in Newgrange, it, the winter solstice, that's the sun shines in and lights um, the, the inner chambers in the winter solstice. And it's exactly across the country from uh carol carol keel where i'm going to be bringing people it's really for people these 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 underground passage tombs has actually predates the pyramids by 800 years the one in sligo where i'm going to be bringing ted predates the pyramids by 800 years and the one in newgrange predates the pyramids by 500 years and it's it's amazing they knew exactly what they were doing like carol carol keel in sligo is the summer solstice and Carrow in Newgrange is the winter solstice and they're exactly opposite parts of the country. So we're going to be visiting there and then we're coming on our way to the northwest. We're going to visit this house called Belvedere House. It would date back to the 13th century. It's very haunted and it has a massive history. Um, the owner was uh, Rochford and he was not a nice kind of a guy. He was a very jealous kind of a person and he married this young woman who was a socialite in dublin her name was mary oh god what was her name molesworth mary molesworth and mary molesworth um went down from her socialite life in dublin to um 
to Mullingar. He built this beautiful house for her. She married him and they had um, four children. The first one was a girl and he wasn't too happy. The second one was a boy and he was happy. Now, um, he used to leave her there and go off over to London and go up to Dublin and he'd leave her in the country on her own. So she became very friendly with his youngest brother and the wife. Anyway, the middle brother, George, was very jealous of her. He didn't like her at all for some reason. And he set a rumor going that she was having an affair with uh, with Arthur. And uh, William came back anyhow, and he locked her into a, a room for 30 years. And they say that um, she haunts the place. And there's also have been reports of fights happening because he used to have all these uh, wealthy people come to the house and a lot of fighting happened in the place. And then there's a jealous wall. Actually, Arthur ended up in jail and um, it was the brother's fault, William's fault. He ended up in jail and um, she was in the, in the room locked away from her children for 30 years. But uh, William used to, used to bring visitors to the house and his brother George who didn't like the wife built a big mansion down the valley so uh Ted I'm talking about <laughs> I held the show for you I'm talking about Belvedere house and I'm talking about cool go for there. it go for it so anyhow um I was talking about the owner that was a very jealous man and he ended up um locking his wife into a room for 30 years because he was told by his middle brother that the wife was having an affair with the youngest brother, which was not the truth. But anyhow, um, he was such a jealous man. The middle brother built a big mansion down the valley and um, George, uh, William decided he didn't want his guests that would visit him to look down the valley to see this bigger house. So he built a jealous wall. And the jealous wall is there to this day and people can see it. And it looks like one wall of a castle. It's, it's really actually, it's called a folly or a jealous wall and it's it's there to this day and again um the la the grounds in this place are fantastic all of these estate houses ted all had amazing grounds and they had gardeners and they used to design them from french uh, gardens and oh. the money that was spent on these places was unbelievable uh so when the houses were restored the gardens were also restored and this is one of them this is on our second day on our way from from Dublin to the north west so on the third day then we're going to visit Westport House and Gardens again it's one of these estate houses you see what happened was the English came over and they fought with the uh, King, King Henry the eighth and he hadn't money to pay them as such but what he did was he took the lands from the Irish and he gave them to his knights and his people who fought for them. So then these people who owned the lands would have built these holiday homes or big homes on them. And they would have put maybe English landlords in or Irish landlords in. And um, they would look after the estates for them. And they were always very luxurious houses and they were always the estates were always so well kept and well maintained but that's that's that westport house and again it's 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 reputed to be haunted and um it's a great place to visit and then we're going to take in a trip down to connemara to visit kong where the quiet man was uh, videoed and we're going to bring it to the cottage where Maureen, and, uh, yeah, where they, where they live. And they broke the bed. My favorite part, they broke yeah, the broke bed. The bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the iron, iron cast bed was great. So that would be on the day three. And day four, we're, um, we're going to Creva Key Stone, Court Stone Tomb. It's an amazing place. Um, it, it gives you the idea of what how they lived, you know, in megalithic times. We're going back we're going back that far i mean really when you think about it ireland is such a small little country but it has such a rich rich history that goes back you know thousands of years so uh we're going to go to um we're going to go for a beautiful i'm going to bring you for a drive around the back of ben bulvan mountain the horseshoe 
and it is mm. untouched it's rugged and it's stunningly beautiful in its own awesome i mean you'd be you'd be experiencing different landscapes as we go you know once one landscape is going to be kind of inland and very green and luscious and and valley like in it and then you're going to go out to the the coast where it's going to be very rugged and it's you really you'll have you'll have a lot of different experiences and landscapes what's that jack daniels <laughs> so anyhow um that's day four day five i'm going to bring you to lock key lock key in the, the forest park and mcdermott's castle from the shore you can see this castle on an island uh, it's an 11th century castle that's amazing and it's really is amazing and there's a beautiful park all around it and for years and years well when i was growing up we used to go over to the lake there and you know you had some amusements but for years while i lived there i only lived about five miles from lock key forest park before i moved over here and i used to go there every evening with the dogs there was a walk a three mile walk around the lake um, and I used to let the dogs run and they'd go for a swim or they'd go into the bushes or whatever. And I would never meet one person. I used to call it, this is my, this is my forest park. <laughs> and this is my magic tree. And this is my wishing chair. And it's full of all these little things like there's wishing chairs there. Now they have developed it and there's zip lines. There's canopy uh -huh. walks. There, there used to be a tunnel to where there was a castle out to the lake and it's amazing there's all sorts of things it's it's an amazing place to go and then i'm going to bring you uh, to boyle cistercian abbey which was a 12th century abbey massive history a lot of um lot of pillage and murder in that particular abbey but it's a very very rich in history and any of these places you go to you know if you're into uh spiritual stuff at all or into um, if you're anyway sensitive, you will pick up spirit there, you know, because oh. you're talking about you're talking about hundreds of years of, of history, you know. Right. So that, that would be um, day five. Oh, day six, we're going to Lep Castle. You've heard about yeah. Lep Castle. It oh, is yeah. the most haunted castle in Europe. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I, I think you'll really enjoy Sean, Sean Ryan, who is the owner. Sean mm -hmm. is... Um, He's a character and he tells you all these stories, you know, but you know, if you're talking to him about the ghosts, there's a church upstairs. Um, and this was handed, this was a handed down from one generation to another. And it was handed to two brothers. And I can't remember their names now, O'Bannon's, I think it was. And one of them was again, very dominant, very selfish person. And the other guy was a priest. And one day the priest was saying mass up in the chapel and he must have kind of broke protocol because he started the mass before the brother had arrived, mm. which was an insult to the brother. And the brother ended up cutting his head off in the church. Oh, God. And he slaughtered all the, the people that was in the church. There was only a few how, people. But how do you cut your own brother's head how off? Much, there you go now. <laughs> there you go. How do you? But he did. How, how do you? And, now, and, real quick, I, uh, let me yeah. say something real quick, maybe, yeah. because... I got a warning on my phone just in case because I might lose my internet again. We have a severe uh, thunderstorm rolling in um, with hail. And really? Oh, you're gone. He seems to be gone again, guys. He might. He might come back. Uh, anyway, that was that's um, the Cistercian Abbey, and that was day five. So day six. Oh no, Leap Castle, Lep Castle, Lep Castle. It goes back to the 13th century as well. And as I was saying, and uh, one of the brothers uh, killed the other brother because he started a mass without him. Now, I think it was it really was more to do with his inheritance because he didn't want to have to share his inheritance with um, his brother, his priest brother. And he knew that the priest would possibly, uh, the O'Bannons, that's it, the O'Bannon clan, Robert, thanks very much. Um, so... Uh, he he wanted the estate and he wanted the castle for himself and the lands. Now the 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 castle was one thing, but all these castles were actually they owned an awful lot of land that would have been around. So he didn't particularly want to have to share that with with a priest who might possibly give it away. So anyhow, um, he killed them and he killed the people that was in the church as well. And just off the church, there's uh, what we would call a murder hole. Um, now there's another name for it. Um, 
but I can't remember it. But anyhow, a few about 20 years ago or 30 years ago, they took out three full cartloads of um bones out of that murder hole because what would happen in olden times was if you were an enemy or if the king or if the person that owned the castle didn't particularly like you, they would lead you up to this trap door and then they Ted said his his storm has oh god they knocked out the internet. Well, I, one way do you how do you feel about me going on with the I, itinerary? We've only a few more days days to talk about, and then we'll wrap it up. But will we do that for Ted just to let you know what what the itinerary is? But anyhow, that's Lep Castle. It um it really is very haunted. Uh, he's right. Um, Sean would tell you that he hears the the crying of a child at night. And uh, two little girls always appear. One of them is called Emily and one of them is called Charlotte. Um, one of them is seven, one of them is 12. And when they appear and they're playing, this old woman appears as well. And she's always dressed in black. And she, uh, Sean calls her the governess. And he thinks that she appears to look after him. Um, so, uh, and um, the, this O'Bannon guy uh, used to have, the locals come up and look after the the castle and he used to look after the lands around but he decided in case anyone would tell any of his secrets he decided to bring 40 of them up from the village one day they he owed them a lot of money so he said that he would he would give them a big meal and he'd give them all their, their the money that they were owed then after the meal but in actual fact he did give them a big meal and he poisoned each and every one of them. And Sean says that now and again, you can see shadows around the outside of the house. And he thinks it's some of the locals who were killed that particular Sunday that they went up to be paid, but they didn't get their pay, unfortunately. So anyhow, that's Lep Castle. And we're going to spend, you know, a good few hours there if people want to do any investigating or anything like that. And of course, Sean will play a few tunes because he's a traditional musician. So we'll have uh, a few tunes for anyone who just wants to listen to his stories and listen to the music and anyone else who wants to go and explore the castle, they can do that. That is day, that's day six. Day seven is the summer solstice. I'm going to bring you up to this place, it's called Karakil. Depending on the weather, if the weather is anyway foggy, we can't go up there. But if it is foggy, we'll go to Caramore, which is another underground passage tomb. And the summer solstice is celebrated there as well. So we won't, we, we'll know what it's going to be like the night before. So anyway, um, we'll do that. And we'll celebrate in pagan style, we'll celebrate the summer solstice. Um, you know, it, it's a once in a lifetime thing for people uh, to come over to Ireland and to go to these places and to celebrate it. And uh, Chanel, I have no idea how you're going to talk to Sean now. I don't know whether he'll get back on. I think his uh, his internet is gone. Anyway, the last day we'll go back up to Dublin again and you can do shopping and go around to a few different places. And then we're going to stay in Fitzpatrick's castle. Absolutely stunning castle. Uh, let me just see if I can. These are the these are the four the three places that we're staying in. And the castle is the one in blue. And um, the one in the middle is Cawley's Hotel in Tobacory. Beautiful uh, family run hotel in Tobacory. And the first one is the 44 on Main Street in Swords in County Dublin. And they're all fantastic people. They're um, great. Um, they look after my my visitors very well. Uh, so that's that is the story. This is let's say this is Glendalough. This is the Round Tower of Glendalough. If anyone wants to see it, but let's see. There you go. You can see that. Let's see which way will I bring that. Oh, he's back. Hi, I'm sorry, guys. This storm is playing hell. It, it's a bad storm. And it's coming through, and it's just it's terrible. So I, I apologize to everyone. I have just gone through the whole itinerary. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't be there. guys? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this damn oh, internet. Yeah, you're gonna get know you're there. 
I'm here, but I don't know what's going on. It's somebody not hearing you. But anyhow, that's that's the um, that's the itinerary for anyone who wants to come over with head. Now, what you do is you go on that website, and there must be, there will be. You can see there where the itinerary is, and you'll see join now, or you know, you see a button, and if you click it, it will open up a big dot form. You sign up there, and you put your name in and contact me, and we'll go from there. Once I get your name and your email address, I can contact you then, and we can talk about the whole thing then. Come there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, Ted. Okay, I'm here. So far, so good. I mean, it's, we'll see. It's just a storm. It does it. I mean, this is the only the second time it's happened, but. Ted, yeah, can't it's, it's that this is all your fault, the storm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I myself, I can't wait, guys. That's why I'm saying, you know, it's, it's going to be a very, very, very fun trip. It's going to be a chance of a lifetime. Um, and I really would like to see my friends come along. Um, yeah, it'd be great to have a it'd be it'd be so much more fun if we we're all together. Yeah, it would know. it would be a trip of a lifetime, you know, um, for a whole bunch of people that know each other or or want to get to know. You see, that's the uh, honest to God, you know, Ted. I was telling you about a post I put up on Facebook today, and I I'm, will I tell your audience what I, what I was saying about coming over here seven and a, like it's just over seven and a half years ago. Well, it's not even seven and a half years ago. I moved over to america and i moved over as a recording artist as a performer and i moved over to marry my husband and we were going to do music all around america which we did i actually have performed in 27 states but you never know where you're going to be led or where god decides you're going to go and this to me my secret island tours is definitely a god thing you know um, because people started, I would talk about the songs that I'm singing and I would give the history and I talk about the areas and people started saying to me, did you ever think about putting a tour together and bringing people over to show them all these places? And that was said to me, if it was said to me once, Ted, it was said to me 40 times. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet. Said, okay. God is talking to me here. Now I have to do something about this. So I sat down and I thought, okay. Um, what do I do next? And I heard, you know, contact your friends. You've got too many. You, because I'm a musician and because I'm a, 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 a performer, I have performed all around Ireland. So I know people all around Ireland. And right. then, you know, okay, you know, what, what do I do after that? Well, you, you talk to them, you find out places and you, you put, you know your country. You know, I kept hearing, you know your country. Bring people to your country. Bring them to your Ireland. Right. And I thought, yeah, I'm, I've been doing this all my adult life. I've been bringing people who have visited my music classes and, and the summer schools. I've been taking them and bringing them around Ireland. And I didn't even realize, well, you know, I was doing it all along, but I didn't. Right, you didn't it, realize it. I didn't realize it. So I thought, okay, I can show people the real Ireland through locals' eyes. I can right. take people to places that the big tour companies can't reach because they have massive buses. They they don't know about because they're not locals. They're right. Americans. They know all the famous places, but they might not necessarily know some of the amazing places that only the locals know. And I can introduce people to the locals. That's, That's another awesome. thing that the big American companies or the big English companies can't do. They can't introduce you by name to their family and their friends and their musical friends and the locals. Mm. You know? I'm I'm so stoked. I am so stoked yeah. for this, you know. I uh, uh Steve Barry, just so you know that it, you can come and see where your family came from you can make that happen yeah um all you need to do is I, and i put it down at the bottom just take a look that's all you have to do is take a look i swear all you have to do is take a look go to go to the hauntedjourneys.com or put in mysteriousadventurestours.com it'll bring it to the opening page and you see over on the right you'll see my package for us going to 
Ireland. Yeah. And just the itineraries there and everything, just look at it. And the price is like amazing. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, you know, yeah, I, you can do I, this. I do my very best to keep the prices as, as low as possible. If I get a deal from a hotel, I pass it on to my clients. Right. You know, so, because to me, I know from checking out tours that other people were doing. And I mean, some of these tours are costing three and four thousand dollars, Ted. Yeah. And they're not getting half of what, what we're offering them because I don't believe in ripping people off. You're going to get a great tour for that price. Right. And you're getting me. Uh, yeah, and you're getting Ted for the whole week. And you're going to... <laughs> And whether you like it or not, you're going to get me as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just lost some people when I said that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be great. It's a nine, it's a nine day to eight night tour. Right. Janelle right. And, you know, I mean, for the price, I mean, they have installment plans where you can put down a deposit and pay so much a month. Uh, you got a whole year to do this. I mean, it's June yeah. now. It's exactly 12 months. It's twelve you know, months. You can, you can pick ten months. You can you can pay a deposit, of, and I'm only asking for a deposit of two fifty, I think. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty, and then you can take the other ten months and divide your balance out by ten months. And it's, right. It's really it's 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 easily done. Yeah. Yeah, so and and and, and with you have to book your airplane though now because that way you're saving, the savings on the airplane things are now. I mean, all their prices are lower. Right now, the might and the might actually be low at the beginning of the year as well, because I'll tell you what, because of COVID, nobody is going to be traveling now. Yeah. Nobody's going to be traveling this year, Ted, and what they're going to need to do in the beginning of next year, they're all going to be buying for business and they're all going to want to be encouraging people to travel. So I would suggest to people, you might not even get a ticket now because it's a year out. But I would suggest to people to, towards the end of the year, start looking or the beginning of next year, start looking for cheap flights. Look at Aer Lingus special flights, one out of, you know, wherever, wherever. Chicago, you get good prices. Newark, you get good prices. New York, you get good prices. Um, check um, Air Portugal. They give great prices out of New York as well. So... Um. I'm looking to see what they might have here. You might not get any traveling now. You might. Yeah, you said Aer Lingus. Aer Lingus, yeah. Yeah, that's like uh, 438 bucks there nonstop. You go. Right straight there, no layovers, yeah, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. And they'll be vying for business come the beginning of, of, of 2021. Everybody is going to be vying for business because they know that people want to start traveling. People are too afraid to travel now. And of course, when you go into Ireland now, you're on a 14 day self quarantine. So nobody is going to travel there now. But, but right. next year, they're going to be vying for all that business. So I think, you're, you know, it's possible. Um, yeah, because back to LA, yeah. Uh, this one here is uh, uh, like because I'm in Rochester and I think Sheila's coming up here and then we're going. Um, yeah. Yeah, some of them are pretty pricey. Oh um, yeah. Holy moly, some are real pricey. Um, but you can. You can search for them, but just make sure you're searching from the right place because I just made that mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And check the check them out. Um, usually, if if let's say Chicago, Newark, Atlanta, um, J JFK, you normally get a good price. And check out, you know, Aer Lingus. Check out um, Delta and check out Air Portugal. Air Portugal gives good prices as well. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I can't believe the prices. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, so they might even go down. Oh, know. they will go down. They will because, I mean, you can't get a flight now. I don't think they're doing any flights now. No, but you put in, let's see, 
Um, you can put in the date. Let me see. What was it? The, what was the first date? It was the... the uh, is it the 15th of June to the 23rd? Or is it the 13th of June to the 23rd? Let me just see. Yeah. So, like, 15th to the 23rd. Let me just see. So, flights, like, right now, um, like, if you're in New York, from JFK to Dublin, uh, round trip, it's uh, 375 bucks. You see, where would you get that? Now, why, where are you going? And that's, that's Air Portugal. How, how how have I lost you, Ted? Can you see me? You can. Uh, am I gone again? No, you're not gone. But I went to look for my calendar, and I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you pr you're probably gone. I have I have. No you. no 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 no. We see you. I have you now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Let me see if I can do this right without screwing it up. But, uh, I mean, it's it's not here nor there. I mean, the prices may change, um, undoubtedly, you yeah. know, so. And I would advise people until such time as I would tell them, because we have to have 24 people, until such time as I would tell them, don't book any flights until I give you the go-ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have uh, 24 people. So, guys, send out the word come with us send out the word get some people to come with you just for the fun of it it's, it's going to yeah. be good but do it soon because we will start pushing this out very shortly yeah and, and we just want to get your name on the list that's that's the biggest thing right now well, yeah anyone yeah. that's interested because it's going to be yeah it really is it's going to be good fun. yeah like i just put it in here and they won't let me do a search for that there you go period of time yeah will not yeah. accept it's dates that occur between 6 3 2021 and april 20th 21st so like right now you can't put anything in until no. it's probably gonna be the first of the year probably yeah it'll be the first of the year they won't give you anything you know it has to be so many yeah. months. and that's that's too bad but still you know i mean it, there's gonna be cheap enough flights so yeah. it, it, either way if you're looking at it if you're you're gonna probably spend 2200 bucks to go but you're talking about a whole week in ireland um with friends um, that will become family because that's the way it is with these trips, you it's know. Yes, it really and is. we're gonna. I have, I have a few. I posted some pictures today of people that are coming back with me for the third time. They were supposed to be coming back the end of this month. Some of them are coming back for the third time. I have some people who have booked four more trips with me. It's amazing, Ted. Yeah. You know, she, Sheila's coming with me. Well, she was supposed to come with me in uh, in October. I think October is gone now as well. But um, she's going to come on your trip as well. So it's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's I can't wait. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, I'm packing. I've got I've got five of these hats, <laughs> all different colors. Um, I, my favorite. My favorite is the black one. I like yeah. the black one. It's very, yeah. very co colorful yeah. or comfortable. 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 And then I have, I have one uh, for when it's really hot. It's a, it's a brown, light brown with holes in it, so the air gets yeah. in there. And, <laughs> yeah, I've got like five of them. So, and I'll probably buy, a, excuse me, a couple more. So. Yeah. You'll have plenty of caps anyway. That's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I just got to figure out what else to buy to take with me. I was told people were giving me advice on what to pack. Well, because of certain that's, things. Another, that's another thing, actually. What I do with everybody is coming up to it maybe three weeks before, uh, we'd be have a good idea about weather. And I send an email out to everybody. I tell them what they sh I suggest to them what they should pack. I will also tell them about, let's say, adapters for your laptop and things. I send a picture. Um, I'll talk to them about going to their phone provider to talk about. Um, talk about um you know what packages you can use with your phone so that 
you won't come back and have a big massive bill like I did once. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, I came back one. I didn't realize that I should have gone and done roaming. I should have talked to them. About, I came back and there was a seven hundred and fifty dollar bill on my phone. I almost choked. Oh. Yeah, I had no earthly idea that it was going to cut because you're charged for everything coming in on your phone. So I advise people to go to the provider and to talk to them about, you know, packages and what you can, you know, what you can do. Um, yeah. Then, you know, medications, if anybody's on medications, I make sure that I warn them that uh, to have a good coverage of medications with them. Right. Um, right. I want to find out if people have allergies. So I, I send these emails throughout the year just to, you know, just to keep in touch and ask. It's good that you care. I mean, I, some of these other tours don't do that. They don't care. Yeah. Well, I, I, I try to buy snacks and um, soft drinks or water for the bus journey. So the people, if they want to, you know, if they want to nibble, because hmm. over there, we could stop in a town. There's only in the big towns or the cities will you get fast food places. Otherwise, you go into a, a, a little coffee shop or a restaurant, and they cook Whoa. the food. What's, what's happening? Oh, lightning strike and lots of thunder and <laughs> oh yeah, that was good. It shook the whole house. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, you can't. We don't have the time to sit and wait for something to be cooked for us for lunch. So what I do is everybody has a big breakfast. We don't leave. To, we leave at around nine o'clock in the morning. So you're not up at six unearthly hours of the morning this is supposed to be a vacation so we right. leave around nine o'clock in the morning i have snacks and drinks and apples and oranges and things on the bus and people can snack and then when we go to a place and um, there's usually coffee shops there and after you do your tour or you're exploring you can sit and have something there but we don't have fast food places you know except like maybe in towns or cities and things like that God, I better snack. I better load up on snacks. So this fat boy is going to get skinny over there. No, we'll have plenty of snacks on. The we won't let you go home with him. I'm going to look after you. Don't you want to? It's taking me a long time to get this big, beautiful body. <laughs> yeah, 54, 54 years. 54 years. Oh, God. Yeah. There you go. So, anyhow, that's, um, that's what we're doing. It's going to be a great time. So, you know, uh, yes, Steve, I love her accent, too. I, I love <laughs> Minnie. She is. She is. She's a kindred spirit for me. She comes yeah. from my homeland, and that's – I'm so excited about going. And uh, if it wasn't for Maria, I owe her the biggest hug. This now, would Steve, never be happening. Haggis is a Scottish thing. Haggis is a Scottish uh, Yeah. It's the it's the innards of a sheep's belly. Ugh, ugh. Barley yeah. in it and with barley and um, oats. So what uh, I'm going to ask, what is the worst thing over there that we may find ourselves eating? Um, or something we want to stay away from because well, we're American. Well, you know that. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about Ireland now. Ireland is one of, believe it or not, in the last 30 years, Ireland has become one of the foodie destinations in the world. We have some of the most amazing chefs you're going to the food is always fresh a lot of it is organic like when we say um <laughs> avoid you know, warm beer <laughs> yeah fish, fish of the day you know when we say fish of oh the i day. hate fish i hate fish well, but it's fish it is actually caught that morning it's of the day yeah but i hate fish oh i love it. <laughs> and when i go home i overdose on fish because i won't eat it here because it's it could be Fucking three years old. They advertise it as fish of the day, and I have to laugh. I think, no, nope, it was not fish of the day. <laughs> so, so, um, I, you see, I don't know. You might, it's food that I like. You might, I mean, but see, I like chicken, I like beef. Yeah, you get plenty, any amount of it. And with our beef, we can trace it back to the farm it was born on. Ooh, really? Oh yeah, you have to by law. You have to be able to trace it back to the farm it was born on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, so not only do you trace your own history. Yeah, we know exactly where our beef is coming from. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I'm on my second. uh, Jack Dennis. Second. That's my second. Oh, what size is the You couldn't be Ted. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's definitely Irish blood there. Hey, this is me first and my second. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Jesus. So anyhow, that's yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that you'll get a gang. I hope that will be great fun. It'll be great, right? We'll uh, you know, we'll be dancing and we'll be telling jokes on the bus. So any of you guys who want to come with us, uh, there'll be a requirement. I better tell you now. The requirement <laughs> is that you have to gather a whole pile of dirty jokes for the bus. Dirty jokes. Dirty jokes for the bus. We do a great crack on the bus. We do a mighty crack on the bus. Uh, we, I'll sing a song and somebody else will come up and tell a story. They say, I have a microphone. And, you know, I, I, I talk about venues that we're about to go to and I give them the history and, you know, tell them all about it. And then I might go into a song and then call somebody up and somebody might have a joke. Yeah, and, and then she might call Ted and say, Ted, you need to sing a song. Song, exactly. Oh, don't, don't you once worry. You're not going to get away without singing songs. <laughs> Which is even you come to Ireland, you want to. That's the thing. Something happens, I, you go to Ireland, you just want to sing. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I want to dance. I want to drink. I want to feel like that's home. I want it to be home because that's what it is. I want it yeah. to be, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's, that's why I want to see as much as I can in the yeah, week that I'm there. Yeah. And the great thing about it is when I bring people home to the Northwest, um. We stay in that little guest house, that little hotel, Collies, most of the time. And Teresa, within a, and this is the truth, I've seen her do it so many times. Within a half an hour, she knows everybody's name. She wow. can, she rec- she has, and she has put, she can recognize everybody's name. And the thing about it is, when we stayed there for you know a few days, we go out in the morning, we come back in the evening, and you feel like you're coming home. And she makes you feel like you're at home. And everybody has said to me, it's like, I feel like I'm home away from home. And that's exactly what I want people to feel like. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's definitely what I want. I mean, I want to, I know I want to kind of, you know, do a couple like little ghost hunt thingies and walk yeah, around. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I want to, um, I want to go to the pub. I want to, I want to hear some singing. I want to maybe do some singing. I want to. I just want to live life to the fullest over there because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is, I don't, I mean, this is, this is my trip of a lifetime. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to go back again. Yeah. yeah. So it's something that I want it to be the best experience ever. Yeah. And you know? I'll introduce you to all the musicians as well. And you're going to have a great time. Well, we yeah. need 24 people, guys. We need 24 people. So spread the word. Tell yes, please. About it. You know, get them to contact me as soon as they can and get the names on. It would be really, it'll be, it'll be great. Chanel, if I can find a man over there, I'm not coming home. <laughs> That's it. If I find a man there, May is going to have to tell everybody in, in, in America, nope, Teddy stayed there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me get into trouble. <laughs> to, to my fault. Yeah, here we go. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. The was the mother of the oh, mother of the Teddy found his... Teddy, Teddy found his husband in Ireland, so yeah, he's yeah, staying yeah. there, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so I'd have a, be a lynch party out for me then, Ted. Uh, here without you. But, but I'll tell you, I mean, if this, I mean, I, I, 24 people is all we need to make this trip happen, guys. So yeah. um, it will be a fantastic trip. So please, please, please do yourself a favor um, and join us. I'll give you the information again. Um, it's uh, mysteriousadventurestours.com, um, and that'll bring it to this page, which is uh, hauntedjourneys.com backslash mysterious haunted adventures. And uh, excuse me, trust me, just take a look. Look at this. Yeah. Look at the itinerary, and and know that you're going to be going with great people. People that you're gonna you're gonna fall in love with everybody. You're going to fall in love with me. And if anyone wants to contact me about any questions, just put mysteriousadventurestours at gmail.com. Oh, yeah, right here. And and I'll answer answer any questions you have. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before you go, you have to sing one more song. 
All right, what will I do? Will I sing one in Irish? Did I sing one in Irish for you the last day, no? Uh, I don't think so. I don't right. remember. I'll, but sing it, it, I'll sing you an ancient, um, this would be a pagan song. So this mm -hmm. is back before 433 in Ireland. Before 433. Before the year 433. This was a, a pagan song. A A D. A D, yeah. Okay. And it's, it's Saura, Saura, it's called. Saura is the Irish for summer. And what's happening in this song is they're welcoming in the summer. We welcome in the summer. We welcome in the summer. We, um, we welcome, we watch the, the, the heifer feed her calf. We watch, <laughs> they're, they're looking at all the nature. They're looking at the colors of the leaves on the trees and the buttercups and the daisies. And they're looking at the children going up the hills playing and going down the hills and they're looking at the beautiful um nature and the birds flying in the air and it's basically we, we call in all these things we call in all good things we, cool. we 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 put out good vibes there to bring all this good stuff to us so with that i would <laughs> ask everybody and um, do you see do you see especially in in times like this do not let this is an old wise irish woman talking now do not think negative thoughts do not speak negative thoughts only think good positive thoughts visualize positive things because negativity is being fed and and it's growing now because too many people are thinking about the negative instead of thinking about the positive. Think good instead of evil. Spread the word of joy instead of the word of fear. Does that make Not, any sense to anyone? Yes. With yeah. That, hey, it does. And with that, I have to say real quick, Chanel put in there, uh, Ted, fill your pockets with four leaf clovers. And Maria Geister is on here. Yeah, Maria, Maria Schmidt is on here. here. Well, I'm going to dedicate this to to Maria um because we had a chat about this earlier on you know you whatever you speak you feed so we speak positive stuff so I'm 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 welcoming in the summer and I'm welcoming in all good and beautiful things so it's only a okay. song it's a very small it's, and it's in the Irish language guys so that's why I'm explaining to you what it uh, is about <clears throat> okay so Rosaura Banya Nagona Hogamur Fain on Saudrelin Saudrelin Fain on Saudrelin Oh, the so it's got to know that she is got love. Call me the Hmm. Wow. Chanel's like my great grandmother is so coming through hearing your song and voice. Uh -huh. May I love it. Thank you so much Good. for sharing your gift. Thank you so much for having me. And I enjoyed yeah. all the comments and um uh, I enjoyed yeah. even you going going dark for a few minutes on uh, the Hey, you know. <laughs> that was but, 
Now you you're doing. I, I want to make sure because so that people can tune into you. Now you're doing singing at home, as well. Say that again. I'm singing where. You're singing. You're singing at home. You're doing your own live feeds singing. I, I no. I only. I'll tell you what. Um, a few people had asked me a few weeks ago. You see, because during the COVID thing, a lot of people in Ireland were doing all these um, live concerts. So I was getting emails saying, why are you not? Because I had put up one or two songs and people says, why don't you do a little concert? And I thought, OK, I have we haven't myself and my husband haven't performed in a while. So we did uh, about a, about a 45 minute concert there a few weeks ago. And then we got so many people that wrote back saying, please do it again. So we did right. one last Saturday as well. And it actually it's amazing because we had something like, I think we had something like 500 people who viewed it and, and yeah. shared for five times. So it's brilliant. And you know, Ted, I kind of, I suppose I did a wrong thing. I, I kind of was so busy trying to build up my tour company that I hadn't time to go out gigging or looking for gigs or anything. And you get forgotten about very quick when you're not out there all the time. Yeah. And um, I thought maybe it was a good idea to do the odd concert from the house. Just, you know, just to lift people's hearts and lift people's uh, souls during these kind of crazy hard times. Right. So, well, I'm trying to I'm trying to get my band to do something like that. Good. That would be great. Yeah, it would be great. Eventually, I might learn a few songs and sing with your band as well. There you go. What do you think? Um, Maybe, why not? I Eventually mean, they they, they they play them. they play everything. They play everything. So, yeah. um, great bunch of guys, and I I've met so many people in the music industry. Um, uh, in fact, I was just told yesterday while I was up at the studio in uh, Ontario, I actually went up to the radio studio. I haven't been there in a month, and. Um, uh, my producer was telling me that uh, he had heard from some of the other musicians that I used to work with over the years. Um, they thought that I was mad at them, or I was, I, I wasn't, I was being negative about them and stuff. And it's like exactly the opposite. I want to bring them on, yes. talk with Teddy to yes. show their, you know, their 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 yeah, yeah their gifts, share their gifts. Yeah. And apparently, something I said was taken wrong. And I want to say to Jay from West of the Mark, it was not that way. If you're watching, or this gets to you. I love you, man. You're 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 a great, fantastic singer. Your band is phenomenal, and I would never do anything like that. I think he took it like I was trying to call him out, and all I was doing was just trying to ask them to join me. You know what I mean? It was one yeah. of those things. Yeah. And uh, I I I love music. I love people. I love singers. Um, I'm one. That I love um, a cappella. I love singing a cappella. Um, I love just an acoustic guitar or just a piano as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it so doesn't have to be a full-on band. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it's, music is music is a great thing for the soul. You know, and it's... Um, it's in us deep. I mean, when you when you have that... I mean, like, maybe it's an Irish thing. Mm -hmm. You know? I, well, I'll, I'll tell you... I, I'll tell you what music has done for me. I have made friends all over the world to yeah. my music. And you know, I mean, you're talking about a lot of people from a lot of different countries with a lot of different languages and a lot of different races, but music brings everybody together. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, do you know what we should do instead of talking, Ted? Everybody should just sing. And then you wouldn't have had half of this shite that's going on around the world. <laughs> I love it. She doesn't even say shit, she says shite. <laughs> sing, don't talk, sing. If everybody mm -hmm. was going around singing, sure wouldn't we have great fun? So I'm going to ask, have you listened to uh, my uh, Flog and Molly yet? Oh, Jesus, I have <laughs> I forgot to. I forgot to. I never think of that. I better write that down, Flog and Molly. I'm just going to send you the link, and you can just, well, I'm going to send yeah, you, I'm going to send you my favorite song by them and let you listen to yeah, it. Yeah, do, do, because I'm hopeless. You'll have to, yeah. <laughs> if I'm sent the link, I will listen to it. There you go. There so, you go. Mysterious Adventures Tours at Gmail dot com. Yep. Maria yep. Smith from Haunted Journeys is also coming with us. Yep. And that woman 
is an amazing person and she knows every anyone that needs to be known in the paranormal world this woman knows them personally yeah. it's yeah. not that she knows them by name she knows them personally yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to have mighty fun it's going to be a so, mighty, mighty, mighty trip all right so before we leave may i'm going to play a little video and then you and i will yeah. say our goodbyes does that sound yeah. good perfect yeah Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, so sit tight and watch this little video for a second, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ted Vanson, Jr., and I am a huge John Wayne fan. A Quiet Man, which was one of his iconic movies, was shot and filmed in Ireland. Well, let me tell you something, folks. I'm inviting you to join me in Ireland. And before you say you can't afford it, yes you can. The company that I am doing this with is called MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. I want you to email them. Check out their website, but email them at MysteriousAdventuresTours at gmail.com. They have installment plans where you can put so much away to go to this trip until it's paid for. You have a whole year to do it because we're going June 15th through the 23rd, 2021. Summer solstice. Amazing. Ireland, summer solstice. What's better than that? Ah, wait. I told you what was better. It's a quiet man's journey. We're going to locations where they filmed the quiet man. That's amazing, right? Folks, you can afford this trip. Again, contact MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. All right. Shortly, a video is going to be coming up here after me, and I would like you to watch it, check out the information at the end, and do yourself a favor and contact them. Join me in 2021 for the summer solstice and for a quiet man's journey. We'll see you there. I told you, I told you, it's uh, it's going to be a great trip, guys. It's going to be phenomenal. And thank you, May, for putting that video together. You're very much. Um, it's it works perfect with everything. I mean, it was it was great. I love I love doing that whole thing in the beginning. I was just like, I did it like twenty times though. Okay, you're a very professional, Ted. You know how to do it. <laughs> but yeah, so guys, you know. Um, thank you for joining and spending, you know, the past couple of hours with us and um, really just listening to us rant, listen to us, you know, uh, talk about something that we both love very much. Um, and uh, <laughs> Maria's like, I know. Nope. I love Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this you is know, she's, she is she is a very soft spot for you, Ted. Yeah, I know. I know, and I have that same spot for her. Yeah. Um, but she is, she's just an amazing woman. I, I love her to it's death. Unbelievable. And, really? Yeah. And she and, well. uh, but, you know, the three of us together on this trip is going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just going to be a hoot. 
And, you know, we really do want you guys to join us. I know that you will have a good time with us. Um, so make sure you get up. And, and I, if, if you want to hit me up personally, I'll send you the itinerary. I'll send you all the stuff that you need. Um, if you want to go right directly to uh, May, just go right to MysteriousAdventuresTours at gmail.com. And I'll send, them the, I'll send them the link then for the jot form that they have to fill up. Okay, or, perfect. Or you can send them the link for the jot form. And either way, we, you know, we'll get them. We'll get you take. Yeah, we'll get you taken care of. And mysteriousadventuresTours.com, and then hauntedjourneys.com uh, backslash mysterious haunted adventures is where it's actually going to take you to. And on the far right is going to be mine. It, it'll say Ted Van Sons, Quiet Man's Jury, and Summer Solstice, or whatever it is. It right there. So you guys, you know, again, May. Thank you. We'll have to do this again in a month or so. We'll have to come back and we'll and do I it again. Get me a bottle of tea, Marie, or a bottle of Bailey's or something. And really hey, but and actually, we got to get your husband with you so he can play guitar yes, and you can sing yes. a couple songs. Um, he would have done that today, but he has a court case tomorrow morning early. So, Ooh. oh yeah. But yeah, and I'd maybe say, we can I'd get. I say Ted. He'd probably be. He probably from now on. He'd probably be very busy. <laughs> 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 this morning when he was at court they were actually signing up people outside the courthouse they were yeah you know maria i was going to ask you i was going to ask you about that marie why does it say hauntedjourneys.com ted slash van slash ness dash ireland what does ness mean <laughs> I didn't yeah. yeah like what is ness <laughs> i don't know either but, but uh, mysterious haunted, you, you'd see it once you go to, um, you know, yeah. Haunted Journeys dash Mysterious Adventure Tours, you'd see it. Yeah. So, but either way, <laughs> um, it's just going to be great. And But, yeah, we'll we'll plan this and we'll do it again and we'll have some more fun. And th next with. time we'll get, uh, oh, that's what the NEST stands for is the itinerary? Okay. <laughs> but we'll get okay. We'll get we'll get Maria on there with us the next time. The three of us yes, will do it. That would be great. That would be great. So, um, oh my God, Ness is better than Nez. What? I don't understand that. Me either. All I understood was, oh my God. That's the only thing I understood. I've had two. I've had two Jack Daniels here already. So, um, but guys, thank you again so much. May Very again, welcome. thank you. Uh, Maria, for all the work that you have put into this trip, um, we couldn't do it without you. You have been yeah. amazing through the whole thing. Absolutely. And uh, May, that's the same with you. You've, you've put your heart and soul into this for me, and I greatly appreciate sure. it. We will do it. We will do it, Ted. It's going to be great. Love. Yes. Love. We are spreading yes. love and joy. Love and joy. That's what and we're spreading, y'all. Positive thoughts, everybody. Positive thoughts. Says, I am so ahead of both of you, no chance with me. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, well, I'm running a whole damn network these days, so. Um, love you guys. I love you too, Maria. Yeah. So, Maria, we got to get you your own radio show. <laughs> yeah. We should, we said that Maria should do a, a, a show together. We have to do that. Hey, Ted, before we go, have you any friends doing radio shows up in Ontario or on Toronto? Toronto, no. Oh, where did Not you go? that I know. Where did you go? Where did you go? Uh, ours is in Ontario, New York, not oh. Ontario, Canada, okay. Okay. but that's, uh, it's the actual network and oh, okay. like I'm running the network. I'm running all the shows. I'm putting all the shows in. I'm hiring wow. the shows. I'm doing all of it. Wow. So yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe on mysterious adventures tours needs a radio show. Maybe it does. We have to talk. <laughs> I would do she, that. She's like, yes. So I put some of my I, music on and we could put some Latino music on because Maria is half Latino. Oh, and, really? I didn't know that. Did I know that? No. Then we could do some good salsa music. Or... There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess uh, she's like, great idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Maria, we'll talk about that as if we happened enough to be doing. But still. Yeah, well, hey. Hey, yeah. you never know with three like minds what we're going to come up with. Th th but that's exactly the thing, Ted. Always think about something good to work towards. Now I remember what I was going to ask you. Cheese. What's the cheese oh, like in Ireland? Gorgeous cheese. We have yeah. different cheddars, and um, there are there's gorgeous cheeses in Ireland. Now, I'm very fond of what they call here. It's uh, 
Um, oh, shoot. Oh, shite. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, how come we didn't say that? Yeah, um, it's, uh, oh, curd cheese. We probably do. Curd cheese. It's just like little chunks of cheese that they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love curd cheese. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely have to bring something home for Mama from there. Why don't we go? We get something. But we definitely have to do How is your mother and father, by the way, before we finish? Oh, what a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, Dad's a pain in the ass. Mom, she's just doing their best. They're both, you know, the dimension setting in. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dad has to have surgery next week, so we're prepping him this week and early next week for his surgery. Um, he has a blood clot behind one eye, and he's going blind in it. Oh, God, love him. And uh, my mom, um, she has a polymer, Poly poly polymer, felbomyalgia, poly poly fel I don't know. All I know is it takes yeah, like, yeah. it's a part to where it just locks up her joints. It's so bad that she can't walk. Oh god. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's bad for her right now. In fact, they were talking about replacing her hip because it's it, it's settled in her hip. Oh god, love her. So um, we're waiting to see. And then my boss just asked me today to come back to work. And I told him, you got to give me a couple of weeks. I got yeah. my parents with surgeries and everything else. So, you know, we have to wait. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's funny, Maria, that you say you, uh, I love them both. My dad remembers you. Uh -huh. <laughs> he goes, who the hell was that lady? <laughs> uh -huh. There you go. Yeah. So, but okay. Um it's just so hard to say goodbye. Yeah, we're not uh, goodbye. We won't say goodbye. We'll say see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for having me, Ted. Oh, Enjoy. you are so welcome. And yeah. uh, guys, Thursday night right here, talk with Teddy um, is going to be this gentleman right here. Um, his name is River Berry. Let me get that thing off there. And he is a bubble magician and an alchemist and shaman. And from what I hear, he's phenomenal. So it's going to be our first magician on the show. So please tune in uh, at 11 o'clock on Thursday. And then Saturday's show, which is going to be, uh, you guys are not going to believe what Saturday's show is. Check this out. <laughs> Hillbillies <laughs> in the holler. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> These guys oh, are amazing. And the guy in the middle, Red, is my favorite. Now, these guys will surprise you with so much stuff. And uh, it's just going to be a riot. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in on, yeah. on Saturday. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe I booked them. It was like, really? Okay. Well, it'll be fun. At least it'll be fun. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much again. We'll talk to you soon. And remember, here from Talk With Teddy, I always tell you to take care of your neighbors as well as taking care of yourself because oh, it's yeah. important. Yeah. We need to take care of each other. We do. We do. We really do. Okay, guys. We'll see you in May. Okay, you take care. Guys. Thank you and my guests for joining me here on Talk with Teddy. Be safe and look out for one another. Don't forget that Talk with Teddy is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So please go and subscribe. Thank you.